Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of First Baptist West Live. And this is live from the offices of our church, especially sitting at Elizabeth's desk. And I uh, want to say thank you to Elizabeth for allowing us to use her desk. And I have noticed, I want to bring your attention to something that uh, right here is our Texas Forever. I thought we were going to get rid of it, but um, we're not getting rid of it. So uh, it will be next week, though. But I also noticed that I do have a Oklahoma University pen right there that's going to be over it. So anyway, it's good to have all of you here with us today, and we're excited about what's happening here. Tonight we have a, a good program for you, uh, along with uh, the devotion that I'm going to share and some prayer time. We also have J.C. Franco that's going to be joining us here in just a little bit. And hold on, let me turn my volume down here. There we go. We have J.C. Franco, our preschool director, is going to be with us here in just a little bit. But also at the end of our program, we have uh, Caitlin Williams. Uh, many of you know her from the KSWO News Anchor. She's going to be joining us in between one of her, her newscasts today. So we're really excited about that. And we're just having a great time. I want to encourage you to, to sign in here. Let us know that you're here, that you're uh, watching and if you have prayer requests or you have comments man we want to hear from you and and I do the best I can to go over everybody that's coming and sometimes I miss it though uh, but I, it's good to see Jeanette uh, Crane here and Janet uh, Marie Johns Will it's good to have you here with us last week we did have somebody special that was tuning in that uh, as it was rolling through I didn't get to see her real, uh, name until afterwards and that was a young lady from Tipton I want to sh give her a shout out Macy Potts not sure if she's going to be watching tonight, but she's a special young lady in our lives. I've known her since she was a very little girl over there. As a matter of fact, her mom and dad are very good friends of mine, Brian and Kenda Potts. And we joke uh, that we were so close. Kenda was always like my, uh, my little sister. And so, Macy, I'm glad you were watching last week, and, and I hope that uh, uh, you're doing well. I just want to give you a special shout-out tonight. But I see Sandy's here. and and uh, doing, a, uh, doing uh, some live streaming with us, so it's cool. You know, I, I want you to understand that quarantining hasn't really been fun, has it? Uh, as a matter of fact, I shared with you last week, we have probably about seven people that I get to be coming in contact with, and uh, uh, it's just kind of tough to stay connected, but I do want to commend our, our deacons, our, our directors, our Sunday school teachers. They're doing a really good job of, uh, of staying con uh, contacted with people. Uh, as a matter of fact, I want to ask you, uh, what are some things that you've done uh, over the last couple of weeks that's kind of kept you from going crazy? Uh, put some of those comments on there of, with this quarantine. What have you been doing uh, to just surviving this? Because again, it's not very fun and we're not getting to see a whole lot of people. As a matter of fact, uh, yesterday we had a, 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 an incident here and I was working in my office and uh, all of a sudden I'm hearing at my window some tapping on my window. And I, it kind of startles me and I look up and man, over in the, standing in my window, is, is, is a young boy, and it's Elliot Silky. Man, he is standing there, he's just knocking on my door and waving at me, and I'm telling you, I know I haven't seen people in a long time because it thrilled my heart. I jumped up and I ran out and I started I st on the door and started tapping on the window and saying, hey, Elliot, Elliot, it's good to see you. And I said, hold on, hold on. And uh, I ran down to the sanctuary and grabbed up a handful of mints and some Jolly Ranchers and ran back outside and from social distancing I handed them some candy and man had a great time visiting with them and a lot of fun with them and just for a few minutes then they talked and then they got on the uh, they got on their bikes with their mom and they rode off and what sadness that they were leaving but then I got to thinking boy I really miss being with you all and I'm thinking what will it be like when I finally get to have all of y'all in church on a Sunday morning. And then it occurred to me, I think it's probably gonna look something just a little bit like this.
talk to her and let you get to meet her and see some of the things that she's doing and hear about what's going on in her life. So, JC, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. All right. Well, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty well. Thanks. All right. How are you doing? Oh, just having a ball here. Uh, <laughs> doing this Facebook Live. So anyway, it's good to see you and I hope you're doing well. How, how's the family doing? They're doing pretty well too. Here's one. Here's oh, Jeff. hi. You want to say hi to everybody? This hi. way, say hi to everybody. Well, hi. <laughs> How are you doing? Is yeah. he the only one going to come on tonight? Well, we may have uh, another one come in. We had to have a <laughs> emergency bathroom break. Okay, That's well, the, hey, it, it happened. The, With the, toddlers. The water, the wonderful things of live television. Amen. Yes. Yep. <laughs> so how are y'all doing with this uh, corona, with this outbreak and staying home and being quarantined? Well, you know, it has its challenges. And I know for everyone, um, different challenges. Um, we're busy here because, you know, with two little ones, we have to keep them entertained. And we have a uh, obstacle course in our backyard that we created. It's pretty exciting. That okay. we, we they run around for hours. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, well, good. So y'all kind of doing well together then, and having a good time mm -hmm. as a family. Yes. We took the pool noodles to make our obstacle course because we had to go under, over from these noodles mm -hmm. over here, and then we have to take some other noodles to go around them. And we have a balance beam. A balance beam, yes. Oh, wow. If I'd have known that, man, we could have uh, come a little bit earlier and filmed and watched y'all do with some of those things. But very good. Very good. Well, are, you, are you having fun with mom and sister and dad? Mm-hmm. Yeah. are. Daddy's working from home. From okay. Home, because they're kind of off from on post. So he's working yeah. at home. Oh, okay. Well, good. Ah, there's little sister. Come to join us. All right. Hi, Leona. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? You doing okay? She's doing okay. <laughs> good. Good. Well, it's good to see my. Oh, I sure miss those girls because uh, for everybody to know that when JC comes up for staff meeting, sometimes they have to come and join us and then they do a great job they sit over there and get their snacks and watch their little videos and it's, uh, we get to visit with them and so i've been missing to see the girls so it's good to be able to finally see them again for just a little bit so well real quick i, I don't want to take up all of your day but uh, i do want to just uh, give you an opportunity to uh talk about some things that are going on uh, as, as everybody might know or those who are tuning in that don't know uh jc you're also the associate bcm director uh, for Cameron University so that you have two ministries going on that you're trying to now keep going throughout all of this stuff. How, how have things been going with that? The BCM has been um, doing our leadership meetings via Zoom. Uh, we've been uh, Facebook Live Monday nights. Um, this past Monday, we did our first um, worship live and then Danny's been speaking. Um, so it's going well. It is definitely new. We didn't have all of our live streaming set up to do, you know, the way that we had here at church. So it's been a learning curve, but it's been, it's been good. Oh, okay. Well, I know that you've been doing some very special things through the preschool department here, especially on uh, the videos and doing the internet stuff. What are some things that you've been doing for, for the kids and to connect the parents with you as well? We have started a preschool parent group. It's a private group that is on Facebook. Um, I post our Sunday school curriculum, and it's been exciting to see some of the kids, you know, show their crafts and things they've done. Um, got to see the Lewis family this week, and so that was really exciting um, with their palm leaves that they made with their hands. Um, we're also starting a dress up and pray Wednesday and where the kids get to dress up uh, the first week we did medical workers and then pray together with your kids uh, for those people that are on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic and uh, just you know something that you can do together as a family and okay focus together in prayer okay, good well with Easter coming up is there something uh, that you're going to be looking at doing for Easter over this week that uh, 
uh, that, that we might let people know about? We have a couple of special things coming this week for Easter. So be looking for a couple of videos. I uh, just recorded some videos today of some of our special books, our Easter curriculum that we have at church that we like to use in the classroom. And I have also um, maybe some little treats coming, some Easter, Easter bags, Easter gift bags coming for our families just to from our church and preschool staff and teachers because we miss our kids and want to just show that we love them and that it's a special time. Uh, even though we are apart, we can still join together um, and just remember, you know, our the Lord's resurrection and just what a special time it is. Oh, good, good. Well, I appreciate all the th things that you're doing. And again, as I said, I know it's not your only ministry. There are uh, you have the BCM stuff that you're trying to take care of, too. So I know it's keeping you very busy, but I do appreciate uh, everything that you're doing. And we've been getting some comments from people that are watching saying they'd love the, uh, the activities and stuff that you're doing. So I, I appreciate appreciate that. And uh, we're probably going to have to be doing this, you know, for the rest of the month. So uh, I, I just uh, anything that we can do to help you, I appreciate it. Well, before we go, though, I, I always like to have people share some things that maybe God's showing you throughout. Uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, maybe a scripture or something that stood out to you that maybe you'd like to share with our people for just a, a few moments. Well, I would say that God has been teaching me, well, just showing me how much um, of an illusion control is, that I don't really have <laughs> control over um, circumstances and situations, and, and we never really did. You know, God's always been in control. And, and as he kind of shows us that, um, you know, only he is in control. I, um, I was just reading in Psalm 121 about um, how we lift up our eyes. And uh, that's where our help comes from. It's from the Lord. And uh, that everything else just could be shaking but he's the one that sustains us. He's the one that gives us hope. And we look to him and if we just lift up eyes instead of looking around and being distracted and being uh, just everything changes all the time. And I'm not saying not to be aware, but just um, to refocus um, our eyes on him. That's really what he's been teaching me the most, I think. Amen. And I think that's a valuable lesson for all of us is that we, we just need to follow him. And trust in everything that he has going on. You know, when we talk about the sovereignty of God, as I was even explaining today, sovereignty of God is easy to say, but it's not so easy to, to hold on to because knowing that whatever we go through, whatever God brings in our life, it's, it's right. And so we do need to learn. And, and I appreciate you sharing that with us. Well, JC, I, I don't want to keep you too long. I know you have things to do with your family this evening. And, but thank you for coming and, and thank you for being such a, uh, an amazing staff member. And I'm honored to have you on the staff here. And, and uh, man, tell your daughters hi and tell, tell Lionel I said hello and thank you for giving some of your evening to us, okay? Thank you so much. I, All right. I appreciate it. I was happy to talk with you guys tonight. Okay. Well, thank you again, JC. We'll, we'll talk to you a little bit later, okay? Bye. All right. Bye-bye.
that's a big trend is that over the last few weeks, I've been seeing a lot of people put up pictures of their younger self and their older self. So what I'm going to do tonight, John is going to show you a picture of my younger self next to me. So are we ready for that, John? All right, let, let's see younger Harold. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Now, this is younger Harold <laughs> and, of course, older Harold. And looking at the camera, I realize that my hair has changed a lot. I don't have any freckles, and uh, my face is redder. But this is only a lesson I learned today is that when it's hot and I'm driving around on Wednesdays, I need to leave the top up on my convertible because my face turns off a red. But there's younger Harold and now. The second one that we have is the trend that's going on is your oldest child and you to see if they look alike. Well, there we go. There's my daughter, Sherry. And, oh, isn't she pretty? I always tell everybody she gets her prettiness from me because her mom's still pretty. Uh, so I'm not. But there's, there's y'all think we look alike? Uh, go ahead and let's hear about that and uh, see what you think. But that's Sherry, a uh, beautiful young lady, really proud of her. Uh, proud of all the girls, but since this is the oldest child, there you go. I wanted to do that one. So there's my older daughter and me. The third one is, the thing that's been going around now, is honor of all the graduates uh, that aren't going to get to have finish up their senior year. People have been posting their senior pictures. Well, my wife did this for us, So, but I'm going to go ahead and show you. In honor of the 2020 graduates, there is Martha and Harold. Uh, Martha graduated from McAllister High School in 1979, and I graduated from Schulter High School in 1981. So there's our senior pictures in honor of all of our graduates. And I've been noticing that some people have been putting on there, oh, y'all haven't changed. Yeah, I think I have. I think I have. Thank you, though, for the compliment. But anyway, and the last one that I'm going to do very quickly is they, they I've always see these little uh, test things that they show and ask you questions to get to know you more. Well, I just kind of usually skim over those as well. But tonight, very quickly, what I wanted to do was I wanted to take one of those things. OK. Um, oh, oh, somebody thinks Sherry's beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, she looks like me. Oh, all right. I like it. Justin, good to have you. Okay, everybody, good, good. Still got a lot of people tuning in tonight. Really excited about that. So a couple of questions. I, I picked out 15 quick questions that I'm going to take like they do on Facebook. First one was, were you named after anyone? Yes, my uncle. Thank you, Mom. I appreciate that one. All right, when was the last time you cried? I don't cry. What are you talking about? I don't cry. I don't know. It, it's been a while. Where were you born? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Do you have kids? Yes, I do. All girls. Praise the Lord. If you were another person, <laughs> would you be friends with you? Well, of course I would. I like me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Y'all may differ, but I like me. So yes, I would be, a, I would be my friend. As a matter of fact, sometimes I feel like I'm the only friend I got. So number six, do you use sarcasm? Of course not. Never. Would you bungee jump? Yes, if I had the opportunity. What is your favorite ice cream? Well, I like uh, chocolate almond, as a matter of fact. What are you listening to right now? John, trying to tell me to hurry up and get through this segment. Who do you miss the most? Well, of course, it would be my, my mom and dad. I miss both of them very much. Who was the last person you talked to on the phone? Well, John, as a matter of fact, was the last person I talked to today on the phone. Favorite sport to watch? Any question? It's basketball. Basketball. Last thing you watched on TV? Father Brown. Father Brown. I think that's all I've been seeing. Hugs or kisses? <laughs> well, well, well. That would all be depending on who's in front of me. <laughs> Uh, I do like hugs, but if the right people of my wife is in front of me, I do like kisses too. So, uh, do you have a special talent? Last one. Well, <laughs> I like to think I do. I like to think that it's speaking and preaching, but I believe I would have to have you all decide that one. <laughs> but I, I would hope that would be uh, my, my special talent. So, anyway, all right, folks, I have now done 
the Facebook trends. Probably won't do them again, but there they are. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, thank you for all of your responses. We got John there. Uh, oh, Sherry, don't pretend that you're not sucked into Father Brown. I'm not pretending, sweetie. I'm not pretending. But anyway, enough of that. Well, before we get with Caitlin here in just a few minutes, I wanted to, as always, take a few minutes and just share a scripture with you and a, and a quick couple of thoughts. And then, uh, then we'll continue on with our program and Caitlin will be joining us. Uh, oh, Alex is there. Good to see you. Greg Belcher. Good to have Greg. Pastor Greg. Good to have him. And uh, Kathy McCallan. Philip. Good. Hey, Philip. Barry, good to see everybody. Um, every now and then, John, they're saying that we don't have any sound. Are we doing okay with the sound? Okay. All right. So we're doing, doing well. Um, all right. Uh, that's Alex. Good to, good to have Alex there. All right. What I wanted to share today, though, is a verse of Scripture, <clears throat> and it's found in Hebrews chapter 12. And I want to read this to you very quickly. Verses 1 and 2 says, Therefore, we also, since our, we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. When I, when I read this verse of Scripture, and the things that I wanted to share with you tonight very quickly, just a, just a couple of things, is about distractions. You know, there's a lot of times that um, we can get distracted. And my friends, listen to me. The time we're living in right now, the last few weeks, and maybe the few weeks to come, I pray just the few weeks to come, man, they can really be a, a great distraction from us and, and take our eyes off of things and let us lose perspective of what's really important. And it kind of changes our attitude. Well, when I'm reading here in Hebrews, what, I, what, what, what Paul is telling us here, he says he refers to Jesus. And the a time of Jesus uh, was his tempting and the time that he could have easily become distracted. Uh, we see that we can sometimes get so wrapped up in stuff. And, and what he's referring to is Jesus when he was in the garden. If you'll remember in John 26, 38, Jesus shared with his apostles. He said that my, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow even to the point of death. And so as, as we celebrate Easter that's coming up, we realize that this was the time of Jesus' life, this week, that he could have easily become distracted by things that were going on around him. And he had openly admitted, man, I, I, I'm suffering even to uh, the point of death. And my friends, we can get over, overcome by things very quickly. But what I want us to realize is, as Paul says here, but he who, for the joy that was set before him, what was coming ahead of Jesus, that he, it says that he even endured the cross, despising the shame, that he didn't get distracted, that you remember in the garden he stood up and said, it's not my will, but thine be done. And he, he went and he went to the cross. And the Bible says that because Jesus was looking beyond that, he was not going to get distracted. And the thing that I want us to understand is that when we come to that point that we get, he was focused now on the Father, knowing that he was going to be sitting at the right hand of the Father. And that was what he was looking at. He was looking at us, and he looked how much he loved us. And, and he wasn't going to get distracted from that. And so what I want to encourage you today to do tonight is to think about the cross. Think about Jesus. Think about what he's done for you. And that we can look beyond that and not get distracted by all this stuff. Because here's what's going to happen. If we don't stay focused on the Father, we don't stay focused on what He has for us, there's going to be a couple things. First of all, it'll affect our attitude. If, if I don't stay focused, especially through these difficult times, and when we're locked in our houses, we're really not doing much, our activities have slowed down, we're, we're doing the same old routine day after day. Folks, listen to me. It can affect our attitudes, and we as Christians can really suffer with our attitude. And we become things that I don't believe God wants us to be. And we can say and act in ways that I don't think is honoring to God. So Jesus looked to the Father so that his attitude toward those who were about to crucify him, even hanging on the cross, you'll remember what he said to those about those people. His attitude was not one of anger and, and resentment and desiring them to be punished. You remember what he said? Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. 
My friend, that was an attitude because he was looking to the Father. So I want to encourage you tonight, test our attitudes and see if we're focused on the Father or see if we're focused on our circumstances. So I want to do that. The last one is that we are affected by our aptitude. Even our thinking can change. The way we think about things, the way we process things, we can get distracted and we can begin to see things that as they aren't really. We become... Uh, thinking that things maybe are worse than what they really are because our aptitude, our, our ability to reason, our ability to think gets distorted. And so what I want to encourage you tonight as well is stay focused on the Father through this. Stay focused on His purpose and stay focused on other people. Because the one thing that I've realized about this Facebook challenge thing that I took tonight, and I even shared this with John yesterday, is Facebook really, really makes us focus on self more than anybody else. Folks, I want to encourage you to stay focused on the Father. And as we stay focused on the Father, we're not going to stay focused on ourself and get upset over the things that are going on around us because what we will then do is be thinking of the way things are and then to be thinking of other people. It's not going to be about me. My friends, when Jesus went to the cross, can I tell you, it wasn't about Him. It was about us. But most importantly, it was about Him honoring the Father. And so whenever we're doing this, I want to encourage you tonight. Man, I know it's been a long few weeks. And, and listen, I wish I could tell you that things are going to get better I would, soon, by tomorrow. It's probably not. But I believe God is working. I believe He is doing some amazing things. I believe people are coming to Him in droves that might not have ever come. I believe that we as Christians have an opportunity to profess the name of Jesus in such a way that, that man, He could be honored and glorified. So things are not going to get really much better quickly. So over the last few weeks and over whatever time God allows us to continue to go through this, can I encourage you? to stay focused on the Father. Stay focused on Him. Get into His Word. Stay connected to people through your Sunday school classes, through, through Bibles, uh, study through the internet, and, and let's, let's be examples of Jesus. So let's not let our attitudes or our aptitudes suffer because of the things that are going on around us. Please don't get distracted. Stay focused on Jesus, that we have the cloud of witnesses that are watching us and being a part of this. So might I encourage you, keep your eyes on Jesus. Can I pray with you real quick? Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for the blessings you've given us. God, thank you for allowing us to have you to look to. And Father, in these difficult times, it's easy to get distracted. That we can even be as Jesus and sorrowful in our hearts. But Lord, he looked up and he saw you and he saw us. And that's when he was able to go to the cross. So Father, I pray for everyone that's, that's watching here tonight. I pray for everyone that will watch the replay of this. That Father, you could just bless them, strengthen them and encourage them. And God, I pray that your spirit would do a great work in the lives of our families. God, I thank you for my staff. I thank you for those that you brought on church staff here. God, what a blessing they are to me. What a blessing they are to our church. God, continue to give them encouragement as they find new ways to minister to their people, to stay connected. I pray for our deacons. I pray for our Sunday school teachers, Lord, that you would watch over each one of them. And that, God, we could see First Baptist West reaching people for Jesus. And, Lord, that's what we're asking tonight. Keep us focused, Lord keep us focused. And God, we're going to continue to give you praise for all that we're doing and all that we will do. And Father, it is in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in with us on that. And I, I just want to continue. My friends, listen, if there is a prayer request that I can pray for you over, our staff can pray for you on, would you... Uh, Comment that and let us know how things are going and what we can possibly do uh, to help you in any way, okay? Um, God bless you and thank you for that. Well, I, I see that uh, Caitlin is here. And so uh, 
Uh, Caitlin, I, I guess yes. you just finished your, your newscast tonight. Yes, I did. Oh. Well, how'd things go? It went good. It was a pretty smooth show. It's uh, okay. been about the same thing, talking about the same thing. I'll give you one <laughs> guess as to what it is. Yeah. Uh, does it start with a letter C? It does. Very yeah. good. <laughs> it went well, though. Happy to be here. And I'm, I'm grateful to still be here and actually uh, able to do my job. So there you go. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you taking your time. And for any people that's not connected to First Baptist West, and we, we have some people that are watching, I've noticed. Uh, I just want to introduce you. That this is Caitlin Williams. And uh, Caitlin is a member of our church, and we're blessed to have her. She's a great blessing to our church. But she's also one of the co-anchors for the Evening News uh, at KSWO Channel 7 here in Lawton. And so she quickly, I, I'm sure you left from the, the set, ran right into your office, jumped I in, did. and here you are, right? Yeah, we, uh, we normally get together after the newscast and talk about some things that may have went wrong or were good about the show. And luckily, we didn't have many things that went wrong tonight. So we could just give, give ourselves a round of applause and I could get in here. So Yeah, there, well, I am really excited about you doing this. Uh, for everybody, I told Caitlin today and even now, I, I told her, I said, I get nervous doing these shows like this because <laughs> this is not my forte. But I'm really nervous tonight because it's, I'm now interviewing a professional interviewer. And so I was like, oh, my, so I, I, I'm a little bit nervous. But Caitlin, again, thank you uh, for doing this. Uh, I, I know how the, the, everything has been affected. And how, how has this virus affected your job and how you guys do things? Well, whenever it started, everyone pushed, of course, for social distancing. And it was about two weeks ago that Monty and I, and if you watch often, then you'll notice that Monty and I, are sitting on two separate sides of the desk now. Right. Um, so that's kind of how it's changed, at least for our, our viewers and how they see it. But we don't have reporters here at the station anymore. They are working from home. And whenever they do, and they do go get those interviews, they go there, practice social distancing, get their stories, and then come back. And we, we do our meetings through um, Microsoft Teams, as a lot of people are out there. Um, we have to take our temperatures every day whenever we come in um, and just kind of working on a skeleton crew right now, but still trying to get um, the people of Southwest Oklahoma all of the information they need as quickly as possible. That's one thing that is never going to change no matter what happens is um, our ability to communicate with people. So we've um, done a lot of interviews via face FaceTime or we've done Facebook Lives just to kind of keep in touch with people. So. It's been a challenge, but I think a lot of the things that we're doing, it's good for us whenever all of this does go away and we're back to normal. We have some new weapons in our arsenal that we can use um, to communicate to our viewers. Okay, awesome. Well, I know you guys do a great job and I'm really, really, again, impressed with everything that you do. There have been a couple of times that Caitlin has allowed me to come on. She's interviewed me at the station and just to watch. And one of the coolest things that Caitlin and them do is, is if you've ever gotten to watch, she does a Facebook Live while they're doing the newscast. I was always told her, I, I just <laughs> love watching those and see some behind the scenes stuff. Well, another thing, Caitlin, that, that I, I want to commend you on is uh, the spirit that, that you have about you. Uh, some of the people don't know, but one of the first times that you came to our church, uh, we had some young girls that recognized you right off. And of course, the mom came up to me and said, hey, is that Caitlin Williams? I said, yeah. I said, do you think she would mind if my girls met her and I said, well, I'll ask. And you were so gracious to come over and man, those, it made those girls day to have you come and visit them. Do you get that very often when you're around Lawton? Uh, kind of. And I was so grateful the Warner girls came up to me and I even got to bring them here to the studio and right. anyone, especially at church, if they take an interest and in, they pull me aside and again, they, they take an interest in what I do, then I'm Come, come here and come see what I do and I'll put you on the desk because I, um, I always thought just knowing what this is what I wanted to do for so long. I thought, well, if there was a, a news anchor in my community or who I watched that took the time and even took me into the station, that could, that would have changed my life, you know? So um, kind of hoping that I can provide that for kids and just give them something different. Not every kid gets to be on TV. So man, if I can Give them that opportunity, I will. But yeah, a lot of people in the community that I'm so grateful for that are not bashful for the most part uh, to come up to me and talk to me. And man, I'll have conversations with people in Country Mart or Walmart uh, a <laughs> little longer than I expected to be in the store, you know, of course, before all of this happened. 
but um, right. <laughs> yeah, it's it never gets old talking to people. In the okay, community. well, great, and I know that that again shows your spirit, and I appreciated how you dealt with those girls uh, when they, they they were a little nervous to meet you, but but you were very gracious to to allow them to come on. I don't want to take up a whole lot more of your time, but there is a, a little story that I, I want, to, and I asked you to share it earlier. I talked to you today, and one of the one of the fun is the funny thing of how you actually even got to First Baptist West. Uh, I remember when you told me that story, it was so cool. So you, do you mind taking just a moment to share how of you course, actually got to First Baptist West? <laughs> I love that story. So um, it was probably spring of 2018. I had been here in Lawton for, I don't know, a year and a half, two years, maybe. Oh, I can't remember. I got here in December, 2016. So whenever, however long. Anyways, um, I can't tell you the moment that you know, or if it was something that I saw or whatever that made me decide one weekend, I'm going to church because I need it. Like I need this. So, you know, being here a little, you know, a little while, but not having um, gotten into any church community, I didn't know anybody who had gone. So I literally got on Google one morning, I got dressed to go to church. And actually it was the night before I Googled a place to go. And it was, some Baptist church over on the west side, and I can't even tell you where it was, but anyways, um, so I was all dressed, I was ready to go, and I had my notebook and my Bible, and um, I left the house or my apartment at like 10 30 to get there early because I didn't know, and I drove up, and this parking lot was abandoned, and I was like, oh my gosh, um, this is this is weird because I thought that this church was like going, and surely they would have services, it's like 10 30 something, okay. So um, I kind of didn't know what to do. So turned to Google again and I was like, all right, where's the closest Baptist church to here? And it was First Baptist West. <laughs> and, um, and I'm so grateful for it because man, as soon as I walked in, um, of course, all of our greeters every Sunday, they are amazing and just like took me in and they were like my mother's. Uh, Jean Peterson is one of them. And <laughs> as soon as she saw me, we man struck up a conversation about my time in West Texas and her time in West Texas. And before I knew it, I even had a place to sit in the church that I've never been at, but that was my place to sit from then on. Um, so man, you know, there's those things that happen and all you can do is just say, God wanted me to be there that morning and God placed these people in my life. And all of those people that I met the first day of church have literally been helping me along my journey um, to become a Christian. And actually, I was saved um, earlier. No, when was it? G December 2018? Oh, yeah, later that year, I was saved. Yeah. And then I was baptized on March 10th, which was one of the best days of my life. <laughs> Woo! I was so excited. And um, for everybody watching, and I didn't get to thank people specifically, but um, how everyone kind of goes around and they love on you after you get baptized after the service, just to congratulate you and show you some love. That was the best feeling that I had, you know, of course, next to being saved and, you know, yeah. accepting Christ into my heart, but just having a church family um, like I have right now is, is irreplaceable. Amen. Well, we're, we're blessed. And as she said that, Caitlin talked about being able that she followed in believers baptism and I had the honor and the privilege of getting to baptize her and then out, what is so cool is, is show you how God works is uh, Caitlin even after I baptized you and then you got on the phone you were you went back and visited with your grandfather and uh, yes. you connected me to your grandfather yes and, and, and you tell what happened there yeah um I told grandpa what happened and um I talked to him and my granny and both of them were like, you know, grandpa hasn't, he doesn't know the Lord that way. So, you know, can you, can you share like what he's done? And I'm like, yeah, of course I can. So I kind of gave him the same story that um, I, I just told just about getting to church and um, just the changes that I've seen with it. And he was like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I don't want this to be morbid by any means, but while I'm getting older, I, I want to know that whenever I pass away, I get to be with Jesus. And I was like, okay, well, let me get you in touch with my pastor because he's going to set you up. And um, we talk from time to time about 
just church and the scripture. And it's, uh, it's been a conversation that I had never got to have with my grandpa before. And it was something a, a lot more intimate than I ever thought of. Cause me and my grandpa, we just joke all the time. And it's just, we either talk about the weather or we make silly jokes. Um, so now we have a, another thing to talk about. Amen. And, and I, I know what a joy it was to get to visit with him and, and meet him over the phone and, and then lead him to, to the Lord. And so again, I, and the reason I'm bringing this up is just showing how when we surrender our lives over to Christ, the difference that it can make with the people around us. And then uh, just recently you, you had your sister visiting with you. Oh, yes. And that has been, oh man, might bring me to tears because she is 14 years old and I wasn't saved and I didn't ask him to come into my heart until I was 25. And this little girl um, just saw what he can do for her. And she came up here for that Christmas break and she started asking me a bunch of questions. And I was like, you know what, how about we go and we talk to Brother Harold? And um, she was like, okay. And I said, all right, Shelb, her name's Shelby. I said, write down some questions that you want to ask Brother Harold that you've always been curious about. So sure enough, man, she she came in with a list. <laughs> she came in with the list and she asked Brother Harold and he he explained everything to her. And um, by the time the meeting was over, I mean, you know, conversation was about an hour or so, I guess. And um, she she accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior. <laughs> and um, Brother Harold helped us do that. And we started doing the um, um, read the Bible in a year. She got her one of those and she'll text me and she'll say, Hey, Kay, what does this mean? Or, well, what about this? And that's been another way that her and I have been able to communicate is just talking about God. And she, she'll text me every once in a while. And she's like, okay, well, I read this scripture and is that what this means? And I'm like, yeah, I would, I would say, I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. So we kind of bounce stuff off of each other and it's nice. Cause again, I never thought that I would have that relationship with my 14 year old sister, but here we are. And you know what? I haven't shared this with you yet, brother Harold. She called me the other day and she says, Kate, I told mom to get me in touch with our pastor back home that we used to go to in, in Sabinal where I grew up. And she goes, I'm going to be baptized. Oh, and whenever so. all of this is over, I'm going to be baptized. So I need you to come home. And I'm like, Oh, Shelby, I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there. Oh, man, that's exciting. I hadn't heard that. Well, thank you for sharing yes. that with me. And, and when, when you do go home, uh, man, I want, you to, I want you to video that for us. Have somebody oh, I video will. So we could get to be a part of that. Man, I, I want to see Shelby get baptized. That's exciting. That's exciting. Well, listen, yes. I, I know you, you've got a lot doing, but I, just a couple, couple more minutes if you got, got a second. Sure. But what I, I want you, you, you've been sharing now how Christ has changed your life, per se. I mean, you, you now have something that you can connect with your families better. And, and, uh, you know, you're, you're now reaching other people for Jesus and that's exciting. Do you have, uh, do you have something you'd like to share with the, with the, with the people that are watching, uh, uh maybe a scripture or something that's on your heart to, that has encouraged you over the last few weeks and, and will encourage you to continue on that you'd like to just share with our people of what Christ is doing for you. Yeah. And and I kind of had to think about it because just being in the times that we are, it's like, like we've been talking about, they're uncertain. It's hard. It's all you want to, you just want it to go away and everything be back to normal. But um, I, and we were reading a book, um, how to have a merry spirit in our um, women's study group that we, we met on Tuesdays. Um, unfortunately, we don't do those anymore because of everything. But ladies, if you're watching, I love you and I miss you. Um, but anyways, there was one chapter in there um, that talked about um, just being humble. And and it was First Peter chapter 5, verse 6, and I have it in front of me so I don't mess it up. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. And uh, the reason that that spoke to me and I wrote it on my mirror in my bathroom and I look at it every day is, um, especially now, I think a lot of people might have needed um, a check. You know, they needed to stop mm -hmm. and they needed to slow down and kind of realize that there's something greater than all of us. And I think right. that um, just that scripture is remembering that 
there's, there's a greater power who's helping us through and we can't, we're not going to do it alone. Um, so humble yourselves and wait for him. You know, I, I see a lot of people and we get a lot of calls, people in the community that call me here at the station and they're like, ma'am, when is this going to be over? Can you tell me when this is going to be over? And I'm like, Sir, that's a million dollar question that only the Lord can answer because I don't have that answer for you. But I think that this has given us an opportunity to slow down a little bit and spend time with our families and simply wait and be patient and remember who we are in in the grand scheme of things. And we're we're here to serve him. And I just pray that throughout this time, people are um, sharing his word and who he is with people who might not know him. So um, that's something that I, like I said, I look at it every day until um, there's another scripture that I find that I want to write on my mirror, but for now it's that one. And it's um, been a big encouragement every day. Awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much for that word. And that's a great encouragement. And I hope people will uh, listen to you and follow that and and take that scripture and and hold it close to their heart as well. Uh, you, listen, you're, you're a blessing to us, and I'm honored to be your, your pastor, your friend, and, and we want to keep praying for you, and we know you're making a difference. I hope you know you're making a difference, and thank you for coming and sharing that with our people. Uh, that's just a way that I want us to keep our church connected and let members stay connected to each other. So I know you're busy, and I know you had to rush to do this, but thank you so much, Caitlin, for, for being here with us tonight, okay? course. Well, thank you for the opportunity, everybody. I love and I miss y'all so much, and I can't wait to um, be back in church again. Okay, we're looking forward to seeing you. Well, you take care, right. and you have a good evening, okay? All right, you too. All bye. Right. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, as you see, that was a, a great blessing. Caitlin uh, is, is a blessing to us as a church. She's a blessing to her family, and, and my friends, I, I want you to follow the words that she says because we can wait, we can slow down, we can get our focus back, and I pray uh, that you'll be able to do that. Well, we're going to wrap things up here, but before I do, I I, I want to mention a couple of things very quickly, if I can. Uh, A couple of things that we have going on is, remember, this is Easter, and so Sunday morning, we're going to have a very special service. God has laid on our heart to some, some cool things that we're going to be doing. And we want you to, to tune in uh, 1045 uh, on our, our Facebook page or, I mean, on our YouTube. And so check those things out. And I know, uh, go to our web page and you can go directly to our service at 1045. We got some good things going on there. But also I'd like to remind our members that this is uh, the Annie Armstrong uh, Easter offering. And so we want to encourage you to, to be giving to that, to our uh, North American Mission Board and North American Missions. So keep that in mind. And uh, another thing with that, as I've challenged you all, we're having a very special part of our service Sunday called the 10 Second Testimony. Now listen, I, I preach Sunday about how we can have an opportunity to witness and profess the name of Jesus. And my friends, you're going to get that opportunity. So what I want to encourage you to do, whether you're a member of our church or not a member of our church, if you're watching from, I know we have people sometimes in South Carolina watching, Texas watching. So if you are able to do that, we want you to take your phone or a camera and we want you to record 10 seconds, just 10 seconds of your life, of what Jesus has done for you, what, what it means to you for what Jesus has done. 10 seconds. And if you would, then we're going to post up a, a, a page where you can send that, an address that you can send that video to. And then we're going to put all those together, and they're going to be able to... Uh, uh, John's going to take them and connect them together. There it is, First Baptist West FBW Lawton at gmail.com. If you will uh, send that video to there, please do that. And I know you're thinking, man, what do I have to say? Just 10 seconds of what Jesus means to you, what, it, what he's done for your life. Send it in to us, please. And we're going to put that on our live stream service as part of our special Easter uh, service comes Sunday morning, and we're really excited about that. And so I want to uh, just offer that opportunity for you, but please join us at 1045. Also, our, our walking with Jesus is that what we've got every year at First Baptist West, we have a time of walking with Jesus on Good Friday, where people come to our church and 
Carrie has done a fabulous job uh, doing that. And, and so you walk through uh, rooms with the last week of Jesus's life. And so because of the, uh, the coronavirus and not being able to uh, be gathering together, what Carrie has done is she's created a virtual walkthrough. And so we want you to tune in, and that will be on our uh, web page as well. And I think we're going to be able to put it on our Facebook. It's going to be on our Facebook page. And we want you starting Good Friday, and it'll run all weekend. We want you to go on there, and we're going to have a virtual Walk with Jesus video. So we, it's an interactive video. We want you to uh, tune in. And, and again, it'll start on Good Friday morning and it'll run all the way through the weekend. You can do it in just a little time or you can take as much time as you want. But I, I think you're really going to be pleased and you're going to be touched by this. This is a very special time uh, for you on Good Friday. But we will run it all weekend in case you're not able to do it on Good Friday. But it's a walking with Jesus, a virtual reality walkthrough. And so we want you to come and be, that, be there with us on that one as well. Okay? Listen, my friends, stay focused on God for what He has for us. Don't get distracted by the things of this world. Let our attitude and our aptitude stay focused on Him. And as Caitlin has even said, let us, let us slow down. Let us take this opportunity. Can I pray with you real quick? And we want to pray for our leaders um, and th then we'll, we'll, before we close out. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for tonight's program. God, I thank you for the ladies that have been a part of this time and the testimonies they've given and the work they're doing. That, Father, you would continue to use them and bless them. Lord, I pray I pray that you, Lord, would intervene in this, this time of our, of our nation and our world. That, Father, you have the power to stop this, to slow it down, to, to change the direction of it. So, Father, I pray in Jesus' name, by the power of his blood, that, Lord, you do a great work for our, our world. And, God, I pray for our leaders. I pray for our president. God, I pray for our Congress. I pray for our governor. I pray for our mayor. I pray for our city manager. That, Father, you would just continue to guide them and give them wisdom. Lord, I, I, I cannot even imagine the pressure that they're under with the decisions they're making. So, Father, I pray that you would first protect them. I pray, Father, you would seal them with your power and that, God, they could seek wisdom from you and that, God, that they could make the decisions that are right uh, for our nation, right for our state, and right for our community. And that, God, that we could have the Spirit of Jesus working through us, that, Lord, we could be supportive in the things that are going on. And, Lord, that we, again, wouldn't be distracted. I pray for our church, that, God, we could continue to reach people for Jesus and that, Lord, you would be able to use us in a great way, that we could see lives being changed. And, God, we know you have the power to do it, so we claim that. And, Father, it is in the name of Jesus I ask these things. Amen. Before I close, I do have one more thing that I would like to mention that you know as a church that we're part of the Bridge Park Ministry. It's the, uh, the, the ministry that, that we do over there. Well, what the ministry is doing is they are feeding people who are in need every day, uh, six days a week, feeding them one meal. First Baptist West did it yes, uh, yesterday. And my friends, we have been called, and I believe God has led us to become a part of that. So every Tuesday, we're going to be a part of helping prepare meals for the, for the people who are in great need. And there's a lot of people hurting right now. So I would encourage you to go to our Facebook page. Also go to our web page. And, and you'll find the things that we're doing on Tuesday mornings every week uh, for, for a while that we're going to be providing meals. If you'd like to be a part of that, you don't have to go serve it. If you'll bring it to the church, we'll take it over. We'll make sure it gets to the people. All we need is our church to be involved in that. So if you'll go and uh, we, we have uh, Susan Thompson is our director of that. She's kind of in charge of that. And we have her number on our Facebook page and our web page. So that way you can have information, uh, who to call, contact and what you can do to be a part of that. Uh, but it's, it's a great opportunity, my friends. People are in need. And First Baptist West can really make a difference. So remember how we do things, man. Our, our whole vision statement is at First Baptist West. We love God. We love people. And through that, we want to see lives changed. Hey, tune, tune in with us 
on Sunday morning, 1045. Also send in your 10 second videos. And then we hope you'll be back next Wednesday night as we have another great Facebook Live program set up for you. God bless you. I love you. And I'm honored to serve as your pastor. And, and, and just have a great week. And be safe. Good night.